Thanks so much for staying up late with us this Saturday night, everyone. I'm Jonathan McCall. I'm Rachel Cole. Tonight, a surprise family missing their loved one who suddenly died this week while on the job. Only on 12 News this Saturday night, family members talking with 12 News journalist Brenda Lipinski as they continue searching for answers into what happened. My son came out of his room and said, Mom, Drew's been in an accident. He's been taken to the hospital and we need to get a hold of Brooke. It was a normal day at work for 30-year-old Drew Cook, a tech at Cool Brew AC, until the unexpected occurred. We still don't know at this point if it was something to do with electricity, if he did in fact have heat stroke. We just don't know. Leaving his fiance Brooke, who he'd known since she was 15, in shock. And I could have never pictured when they put me in that consult room and they told me that he was gone. It was the worst day of my life watching. I, I feel like I had an out of body experience. Just, I, I didn't know what to do, I screamed. Just let out the worst scream you could ever imagine and that was the only thing I could do. News of his death hard on their three children who considered their dad a hero. And our youngest is two and she, um, today is the first day she's actually realized daddy's not coming home. And she's been saying she missed her daddy all day. It kills me because I don't know how to explain that we're not going to see him right now. The family sharing that Drew was an adventurer and a kind soul. He was very funny, very give you the shirt off of his back. I mean, he would have literally laid down his life for anybody that he cared about. A one of a kind man that will continue to live in their hearts. I've felt his presence. I know he's here. He's He would not leave me alone. I know he's watching no, he me and I know he's, I have the most beautiful angel up there waiting for me when I'm ready. Brenda Lipinski, 12 News. Let's hope that family can get some answers soon. Brenda, thank you. The family says that they are currently waiting for the medical examiner's report to determine the cause of death. Meanwhile, a GoFundMe page has now been set up to help his fiance and their kids after this loss. You can find more details on that GoFundMe page right now at 12news.com. Let's talk weather tonight. A record-breaking day of heat in the valley. Tonight, we're getting you ready for another 12 News weather impact alert day because of that excessive heat. Meteorologist Stella Sun here tonight with a look at what's on tap as you head out to work, church, brunch in the morning. Stella, could we see more record-breaking heat tomorrow? Yeah, I am expecting the forecast tomorrow to either reach or beat the record, a nearly five decade old record. So tomorrow's high 116 degrees, and that is where the record stands. That was set in 1975. Temperatures also on Monday near record breaking temperatures. 115 is what you can expect as a lot of us get ready to go back into work. That record was set last year at 116 for Monday, and that is exactly why we remain under that excessive heat warning because you've probably noticed those overnight low temperatures. It isn't cooling down, so this excessive heat warning runs until 8 p.m. on Monday, includes a lot of our western counties, including Mojave, La Paz. You can see here Yuma County, Maricopa, parts of Pinal County. Temperatures anywhere from 111 to 116 could be forecasted as we move along through the next couple of days. Many areas across the valley still in that triple digit territory, 103 at Phoenix Sky Harbor, triple digit temps at Fountain Hills, Scottsdale, 95 towards AJ, 95 in the Queen Creek area and upper 90s in Glendale, Sun City, mid 90s in the Surprise area. And looking ahead, as we move along through the rest of tomorrow, you can see those temperatures already by lunchtime nearing that 110 mark. This means overhydrate, stay indoors as much as you can. I am also tracking some monsoon moisture that will give us a tiny bit of relief as we march along through that work week. A check of your full forecast coming up. Stella, thank you. And now to our wildfire coverage. We're tracking two new fires burning on the Agua Fria National Monument. The Badger and Skeleton fires are about five miles apart. They're burning just north of Black Canyon City, east of the I-17. The Skeleton Fire doing the most damage with more than 1,400 acres burned at this time. Crews are working to fight the fires they say were caused by lightning strikes. New tonight, a Miranda man reportedly distracted by video games now charged with the murder and the death of his two-year-old daughter who died after being left in a hot car for hours. A grand jury upgrading the charges against Christopher Schultz, that girl dying last month. According to court records, Schultz did not leave the air on in that car as he had previously claimed. His kids also say that he was distracted by video games in the house. And get this, text messages between Schultz and his wife also found 
It was not the first time that he had left their baby girl in the car. He's now also facing a charge of child abuse. Tonight, a kitchen fire broke out at a popular Mexican restaurant, the Mexicano in North Phoenix. Mexicano is near Tatum and Cactus. Fire crews were able to quickly put out the flames by cutting holes above the oven, making sure that it didn't spread to the attic. No one was hurt in that fire, but it's unclear if the restaurant will have to close for some repairs. Only on 12 News this Saturday night, VA Secretary Dennis McDonough says that the Department of Veterans Affairs has set another record-breaking year in processing veterans' benefit claims with the Phoenix area now leading the way. Secretary McDonough delivering that speech before thousands of veterans this morning at the Disabled American Veterans Convention taking place here in Phoenix. During that speech, he says that during the current fiscal year, more than 1.1 million veterans have received benefits, which is an all-time record. 54,000 of those claims processed right here in the Phoenix region. The Phoenix region also leading the country in the number of outreach events for tribal veterans, family members, and survivors. One of the things we endeavor to do at VA is to make sure that we get every veteran the benefits they've earned as a result of that service. And here in Arizona, uh, the re Phoenix Regional Office completed more than 54,000 claims for veterans in this fiscal year. Tomorrow is the last day of the DAV convention and all veterans are being encouraged to attend to file claims, get information on existing claims and to learn more about programs and to get medical screenings for benefits on site. The event is underway from 9 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon at the Phoenix Convention Center. In decision 2024, Maricopa County conducting an audit of ballots from the primary election today. Political party workers hand counted 2% of ballots cast in Tuesday's election with the county live streaming the process as you see there. The purpose of today's audit is to test the accuracy of the tabulation equipment. Make sure to stay with 12 News on air and online for all your election coverage. You can also find the latest updates at 12news.com. It is down to the wire as Vice President Kamala Harris searches for a running mate in her run for the White House. This weekend, Harris and her team vetting each of the finalists for last minute interviews. Arizona Senator Mark Kelly is expected to be one of those finalists. Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz and Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro, along with Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, rounding out those final four. Harris and her running mate are expected to have their very first joint rally Tuesday in Philadelphia. The duo expect to make a stop in Phoenix on Friday.